Oh man, oh. You need, you need to be really careful whenever you hook. Just kidding, it's only 24 volts. We've got new stepper motors to install. These are NEMA 34, 1128 ounce closed loop stepper motors. Now the difference is between the closed loop and the ones that I have now, there's an encoder built in to the stepper motor itself. And it's got this, looks like an old VGA cable that sends a signal back to the driver. So I had to get two new drivers. So this is the KL8082H stepper driver. And it goes with the KL348N1000. This driver and this motor came together in a kit, which also had these extension cables. The benefit of this closed loop motor is that it has an encoder on the back and it runs a lot cooler than a regular stepper motor. The encoder tells the driver whether or not the motor's keeping up with the amount of revolutions or steps that it's supposed to make. And if it doesn't, it sends a signal back and you can have an alarm or it can slow it down or speed it up, whatever it needs to do. And it's not that difficult to connect. I just went on to Automated Technologies website, downloaded the schematic, and there it is. It tells you by each wire by color where it goes right here. So this driver connects just like all the other drivers that you would ever use. These connections here go to the stepper motor itself. This is the power from your power supply, and that's the ground to your power supply. These connections up here go to your breakout board. Now your pulse positive and your direction positive jump one to the other. Pulse negative and the direction negative just go back to your breakout board. This is my old stepper driver. The enable positive and the enable negative don't even get connected to anything. I was fortunate that these two drivers are the same identical size. The difference between these two is that the power feed is in a different position, so I need to rewire this to make sure I don't jump something the wrong way. This is the connection from the stepper motor, and I know the black is a positive, and it's just gonna reconnect just like that. And of course, the new motor wiring colors don't match the old motor wiring colors, or the cable that I have running all the way back from the motors to the drivers. So not to confuse myself, I wrote down all the old color and all the new colors on the motors, the drivers, and the cable that runs from the motor to the drivers. When I first wired this, I never thought I was gonna have to take it apart. And I did a good job when I wired them the first time. Then came time to deconstruct. Found that the set screw was missing and the gear wasn't set to the flat part of the shaft. I went ahead and replaced the connector on the stepper motor. Used a four pin screw together, male, female. And I didn't show you my soldering job because it's not that great. On the original driver, there's eight dip switches. The first four switches determine how many amps there are according to the stepper motor's rating. The next four switches are based on the amount of micro steps that you want per revolution. My new driver only has six switches. There's no way to set this for the amperage rating of the motor. The first four switches are just for the amount of pulses per revolution. The default was 1600, that's what I left it at. Switch five is for the motor direction, and switch six is for the motor type, and I just left it as it came. Thought it might be a good idea to note where the pins were on the connector. And I also noted where I laid the soldering iron. Took out two old drivers and put in two new. And gave it a little test and voila, it works. While I was waiting for my new gears, I went ahead and did a little deconstructing, a little rewiring. I need to replace some non-shielded wire with shielded wire, which was giving me problems. Got more wire to extend the communication cable to the encoder. So I got these motors and they didn't have a flat spot like my old one, but they did have a keyway. And when my, 
my gear showed up, the keyway didn't match. So I had to go down and get a machine. Now I have a custom keyway with a set screw. And so we don't have this problem again, put a little Loctite on the set screw. So button it all up, connect it all together. This is all temporary because I'm going to rebuild this someday, making sure that no cables get in the way. Got it all hooked up. Here goes nothing. Who am I kidding? I already test drove this before I put it on camera. That profile is not flattering. Okay, so the new motors work great. They're a lot quieter. They're not getting near as hot as the old motors. And I know the difference between the closed loop and the regular stepper motors. When I first built this thing, I had to use closed loop right from the get-go. Originally, I had my A motor, which is the slave, set in the low position, and I had the X motor in the active high. Now with this new configuration, it was actually running in the opposite direction. So I had to change that. The X is now active low, and the A is active high. And it goes in the right direction. The problem I have now is that the map for this motor is different than the old motor, so it's going twice the distance. All I have to do is get back into the software and change the settings on the motor mapping. With any luck, our next video will be about rebuilding the whole CNC. The gantry brackets are going to be out of half inch aluminum plate. Now what am I supposed to do with this? So remember, subscribe, leave a comment, leave any suggestions. Watch these videos. We'll see you real soon.